So for those who are still signing on and didn't hear me introduce myself, my name is Casey Devine. I'm the Office of Global Engagement's Inbound Exchange Coordinator and a new Education Abroad Advisor. I also previously worked as the coordinator for the office, so I did a lot of work with students on working on their initial steps in their study abroad process. I'm joined by my colleagues, Lauren, Ashley, and Young Min. They will help me monitor the Q&A during the presentation. So if any questions do come up, feel free to use that function. Do not use the chat function. We'll be able to really focus on answering your questions if you type it in the Q&A part of the Zoom meeting. So first to just give you a bit of an introduction to who I am. Like I said, my position with the office is helping inbound exchange students at Drexel and being an education abroad advisor. I studied abroad in college and I also lived abroad after graduating. I taught English in France. I can attest that both of those experiences were very formative and influential on my personal and professional development. And we hope that you seek similar opportunities while you're here at Drexel. And this presentation will go over how you can get started with that. So first, welcome to Drexel. We know that last year was fairly unconventional. So for those of you who are starting your second year, welcome back. For those of you who are starting your first year, we're so excited to have you and have you experience Philadelphia, but also prepare you to send you away from Philadelphia to study. So we are, like I said, the Office of Global Engagement. We facilitate off and on campus global opportunities. This is what we're going to go over during today's presentation. I'm first just going to talk quickly about what studying abroad is, then going into what students gain from studying abroad. I'll also talk about the kinds of programs that will be available to you, some important logistical pieces such as application timelines, the cost of programs and different scholarship opportunities. And like I said, we'll leave time at the end for Q&A. Um, to repeat myself again, feel free to use the Q&A function throughout the session and my colleagues will answer your questions. Um, and then if there are any unanswered at the end, we'll have time for that. So before launching into study abroad, I do want to talk about other global opportunities that are available to you, um, mainly that are facilitated through our office. So the Global Engagement Scholar Certificate Program requires students to complete a certain amount of global experiences that can include studying abroad, taking globally themed courses, and attending global events. If you complete those requirements, you receive a certificate at the end of the program, as well as a distinction on your transcript. Global classrooms are co-taught by a faculty member at Drexel and a faculty member from an institution abroad. In a global classroom, you'll take a course with students from that institution and collaborate with them on group projects and assignments. And there are global classrooms offered in a wide variety of disciplines. So be sure to check out our website for a most up-to-date list of offerings for the upcoming academic year. Some global classrooms may also have an in-person component where you can actually meet the students and the faculty from our partner institution that you worked with over the course. Global engagement funding is also available for students who participate in international research or international service trips. And every year we host the Student Conference on Global Challenges, which centers around a global theme. Last year's theme was disaster. This upcoming year, the theme will be aging. And students are invited to present their research about that theme from a variety of academic disciplines. You can either present present on a panel or a poster, but this is a great introduction to what participating in a professional conference is like. The Dornsife Global Development Scholar Program also gives students the opportunity to work alongside World Vision International on various humanitarian efforts in rural, rural parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia, and those programs usually last from three to six months. So now to focus on study abroad. These are some misconceptions that students may have about studying abroad that we like to debunk. So the first one is that students might think that if you're a humanities major, if you're studying a foreign language, you can study abroad 
but if you're in the sciences or if you're a design student, that might not be an option for you, but all majors at Drexel are able to study abroad. You will work with your academic advisor to determine which term you can study abroad to make sure that you will graduate on time. So that debugs our second myth. Um, we actually had a student ambassador who studied abroad and she was able to graduate early. Another misconception about studying abroad is that you need to know a foreign language to do so. And while it is a great way to enhance and develop your second language skills, you do not necessarily need to know one to participate in a program. We have programs in many English speaking countries and English is widely used at higher education institutions around the world, even in countries where English is not the official language. Finally, students might be a bit intimidated about the cost of studying abroad. I'll go into this in a bit more detail later, but if you do study at a Drexel partner, your tuition and financial aid will remain the same. We do also offer many scholarship opportunities for students and the cost of living at some of our destinations are actually cheaper than the cost of living in Philadelphia. So what is study abroad? When you study abroad, you earn academic credit at an international location. If you participate in a Drexel sponsor program, you will receive Drexel credit for the courses you take. And like I said before, all majors at Drexel are eligible to study abroad. So there are many benefits from studying abroad from a couple different perspectives. Academically, when you study abroad, you learn about your field from a much different perspective. One, you'll be taking classes with students from all over the world with different backgrounds. You'll also be working with faculty who have different approaches to teaching. So from that, you'll be able to expand your network globally through collaborating and working with those students and learning from professors. And like I said, living somewhere where the language you are learning is spoken is really the best way to develop your foreign language skills. I can attest that using your language in everyday life and in the classroom will really enhance your speaking and listening skills. And you'll be able to bring those back to Drexel and really score highly on any exams or speaking tests that you have in your foreign language courses. Studying abroad also allows for a lot of personal growth. You'll definitely develop a deeper sense of independence through navigating life abroad. This will help you realize what you're capable of when you find yourself in situations that might be uncomfortable or different than what you are accustomed to. In turn, you'll become much more flexible and way more confident about what your capabilities are, and you'll understand the challenges that come alongside living overseas, but ultimately will show that you embody these traits. You'll also become much more open-minded to different cultures and how people around the world live. And having cultural competen competency and gaining respect for people and lifestyles that are different from your own will really open up your eyes to new ways of life and perhaps a new language. Studying abroad is also a really great way to make yourself stand out as a job candidate. It's a great resume booster. It's also an excellent talking point in interviews. So we've had students come back from their study abroad experiences and say that they've always brought it up as a talking point in their co-op interviews. So you can use that experience um, right when you get back um, as an advantage. It shows that you take initiative, that you've developed cross-cultural competency, and that you can work with people from different backgrounds and different perspectives also shows that you're resourceful and flexible, and those are all traits that employers are looking for. So we have a couple of different types of programs available for students, one being freestanding. A freestanding program is when you go abroad with a cohort of students from Drexel or other American universities. These are typically run by third party providers and tend to provide a bit more um, structure and support to students while you're there. 
you will earn Drexel credit and Drexel grades for the courses you take in a freestanding program, mainly because the teaching style of these programs is similar to what you're used to at Drexel. With a freestanding program, you do need to pay a program fee. That will include housing and it might include a transportation card. It might also include some field trips as well. And that program fee is paid to Drexel. Participating in an exchange program means that you enroll as a student at a university abroad. You would take classes alongside local students and other international students. And since the teaching style and pedagogy really differs depending on the institution that you're at, you will receive Drexel credit for the courses you take. This means on your transcript, you will see CR for credit or NCR for no credit for each class, depending on if you pass them. So this will not impact your GPA. You will have the advantage of selecting from a much larger course course catalog and you do not need to pay a program fee but you should budget for paying for housing and living costs housing opportunities differs per institution some students do live on campus others find off-campus housing it really depends on where you decide to go We also offer intensive courses abroad which for short we say ICAs these are great options for students who may not want to commit to a full term abroad. They're faculty-led programs that occur between terms at Drexel. This is a great way to really immerse yourself in a topic while learning alongside experienced faculty. Some examples of previous ICAs include a fashion industry one in South Korea, studying tropical field studies in Ecuador, and there is also an ICA about the Beatles in Liverpool. When you do an ICA, you can earn one to four credits from participating, and most are open to all majors, although some might be major specific. You will need to pay a program fee to Drexel for participating in an ICA, and there are different programs offered every term, so I definitely recommend looking at our website for the most up-to-date list. Um, later on in the presentation, I'll show you what our website looks like and help you navigate that. So if you have your heart set on a destination or a program that we do not have an exchange agreement with, you can participate in an independent study abroad program. There are study abroad programs available all around the world. So you are expected to do your own research to determine which program you want to do, but we will help you with that application process. If you do an independent study abroad program, you will receive transfer credit, not Drexel credit. I'm not sure if we have any graduate students here, but did want to include a little bit of info about graduate study abroad programs. They do vary based on your discipline. There are some long-term ones available as well as ICA programs specific for graduate students. Um, and you could do an independent study abroad program as well. So we of course need to talk about COVID still, unfortunately. It is great though that most long-term education abroad programs in fall 2021 have resumed. We have a group of around 130 students who are abroad right now, and we just welcomed back students who studied in Korea in the spring and London in the summer. In line with the university's COVID-19 essential travel guidance, all programs were reviewed by the Essential Travel Review Committee. They reviewed each program's safety based on a number of criteria, including the required vaccination of travelers, strong local support from our partner institutions, and consistently dropping COVID-19 infection rates and rising vaccination rates. We also provide additional support to students who are studying abroad in a COVID-19 environment, so that includes check-ins with students, doing a quick information session before they go, making sure that everyone is prepared to be safe and healthy while they are abroad. So the best years for students to go abroad are your sophomore, pre-junior, and junior years, generally because you have a bit more flexibility in your plan of study. The fall and the summer generally have the most 
program options. I would recommend taking some time to get settled into Drexel and then talking to your academic and co-op advisors to determine what term fits best into your plan of study. But it's also never too early to start planning, so I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, attending the session is the best way to get that first step knocked out of the way. So talking about the cost of studying abroad, if you do a Drexel program, you would pay your Drexel tuition and keep all financial aid that you receive for that academic year. You will need to pay a program fee for a freestanding program as well as for ICAs. And if you do an exchange program, you will have to budget for housing. So we do have a couple of different scholarship opportunities available for students. During the summer term, you can apply to blog for us and get paid to share about your experience on our WordPress page. Our office also offers a diversity scholarship for students who are underrepresented in study abroad, as well as a financial needs scholarship that's available for students with high financial need. If you're interested in studying in Scotland, you could receive $25,000 to study at the University of Aberdeen, um, and that would be through what's called the McNeil Scholarship. We also have the, for short, the MDR scholarship where students receive funding to study at Trinity College in Dublin. You can also receive a scholarship for participating in a global classroom or being a global engagement scholar. And your application fee is generally waived if you are in either of those programs. Now, there are also scholarship opportunities that are external from Drexel, including the Gilman or Freeman Asia. There is an office at Drexel that specifically functions to help students open those fellowship or scholarship applications um, and will help you make your application really stand out to optimize your chances of receiving additional funding. So what are your next steps in the application process? I would recommend reviewing our programs on our website to narrow down what you're interested in applying to. And again, shortly, I will walk you through some useful links on our website to show you what kinds of resources you can find there. Talk to your academic advisor about studying abroad. I would also recommend talking to your co-op advisor to review your plan of study, see what term might work best for you. And when you're ready, complete an advising questionnaire on our website to schedule an appointment with a study abroad advisor. So we do ask that you narrow down your program destination, at least since each advisor manages programs based on location. Once you know at least maybe three locations that you're interested in, you'll email us at studyabroad.drexel.edu, which I can add in the chat really quickly. This will be your go-to email for the first steps in your application process. So you'll email us, tell us which programs you're interested in. Also make sure to tell us that you attended a study abroad 101 and we'll help you schedule an appointment with that advisor who will then open your application once you're ready. So I'm now gonna do a walkthrough of our website just to show you some useful pages to visit. I believe I already have it open. So here, if you'll see, you see education abroad on the drexel.edu slash global website, some useful pages to go to. One, you click on undergraduate programs and then use the search by country tool. This is probably the easiest way to narrow down your program selection or if you just want an idea of where we have partners. So on this page, you'll see a full list of countries where our partner institutions are located. I'm going to go ahead and click on Switzerland. If you click on that country page, you'll see that we have a partner at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, both with their engineering and business schools. So let's say you know you want to go to Switzerland and you are a business major. Click on this link and you'll see a little bit more about this program. And then if you click here, open that in a new tab, learn more about this program, you'll be taken to the program brochure. On the program brochure is where you'll find a lot more detail about that specific program. So you get a bit more detail about what 
the program is, the location, eligibility. You'll also see the program advisor listed here. So my colleague Ashley is the advisor for our programs in Switzerland. If you click on academics and program calendar, you'll see a list of course equivalents. That means that you'll see a list of classes that Drexel students have gotten approved to take while they're at this university. That, court, that list is not limited. You do not have to take all of those classes. You'll go through an approval process once you apply, um, but this just gives you a good idea of what courses you might be able to take. You'll also get some info on the program calendar and when around the time of year that it starts. You'll get some info about housing and visa, the cost and financial aid, and the application process. So right now we don't have any active application cycles for this program, but I believe for fall 2022, those cycles should be opening within the next few weeks. So this is just to give you an idea of what a brochure looks like. You can look in, into as many as you would like. You'll see if you go back, you'll be on the main page with all the countries listed here. I would also recommend going to the Intensive Courses Abroad page. This is where you'll see the most up-to-date list of our ICAs. So you'll see summer break, fall, winter, spring, and similarly, if you click on one of these, you'll find a program brochure with the program overview, a calendar, cost, all of that. Another page I want to share is the Global Engagement Scholar page. So if you're interested in the GES program, you'll see a full breakdown of the program requirements and then click on this link to fill out an application. You can email global at drexel.edu for any questions about the GES program. If you wanna see more about our scholarships, you'll go to this top navigation menu under funding, click education abroad scholarships, and then on these two pages, Drexel Affiliated Scholarships and External Scholarships, you'll see a full list of scholarships that you can apply to. So these were the two that I mentioned, the Diversity and Study Abroad and the Financial Needs Scholarship. We also have these scholarships for students who apply for intensive courses abroad. So this is a great resource if you wanna learn more about different funding opportunities while you're abroad. Back to the presentation. Here are some of our social media handles. I know you can't really see our TikTok linked at the bottom, so I'm gonna add that in the chat too because we have recently launched it and we're hoping to have some new posts from our students who are currently abroad. Um, so that is our TikTok handle that I just shared to the chat. Um, so these are our social media links. I would definitely recommend following us on Instagram. Um, like I said, we have a lot of students abroad right now, so we're really excited about sharing our content there. And this is our website. So if you just click on this link, you'll be taken to the page that I had just showed you. And like I said, this email address is where you can reach us if you're ready to open an application and meet with an advisor. Um, just be sure that you say you attended this 101 session and we will be happy to direct you to the appropriate advisor to meet with. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so I can see the Q&A again and see if we have any remaining questions that need to be answered. I believe Young Min is typing an answer to one right now. Great. Are there any other questions that our attendees have that you'd like to put into the chat? We'll give everyone a few minutes if needed. Yeah, I'll unmute myself here. Um, we're here to answer your questions. This is the Q&A portion. So feel free to throw your questions in the chat. Um, throw as many at us as you got. We'll answer some. I'll answer them verbally. And Youngman and Ashley and Casey will answer typing if we can't get to all of them verbally. So let me, I'll pull up the chat here. Um, first one that I see being, do you know if ACC Housing makes exceptions on their leases for study abroad? The same way they make exceptions for co-op. Yes, they do. They certainly do. Um, 
So if you are living in Summit or Chestnut or one of the ones that are owned by ACC, they will make exceptions for uh, study abroad. You just have to get it in writing. How will housing work if you're away from for one quarter? Well, it depends on where you're living. If you're living on campus, it's very easy. You just sign a get out of housing form and they take you out of there. If you're living in the ACC housing, then like I said, you can get something um, written from our office to get out of your housing there. And if you're living off campus, then that's something that you'd want to speak about with the landlord while you're signing anything. But it is certainly something to think about ahead of time. Our study abroad sessions typically one quarter or two to make up a semester. Generally speaking, most students go abroad for a term. This is a great question. We're a quarter school. A lot of our partners are semester schools. We spend a lot of time fitting a square peg into a round hole. Um, most of our partner programs are semester programs and they count as a quarter here. So sometimes the credit comes back a little heftier. Like if you take, you know, um, 14 semester credits might count as 17 quarter credits or something like that. But um, it doesn't typically mean that two quarters make up one semester. It's typically you go abroad for a term and we count it as one quarter. Do we have to take care of the visas ourselves or does the school do it first for ICAs? Um, if you're an international student and you need a visa for an ICA, that is your responsibility. If an ICA is, if a visa is required for ICA for everyone, then we'll send you the directions. But if it, if it's if it's just an individual um, situation, then that will be something that we'll help you with. But uh, we won't do it for you. That will be your responsibility. Uh, the pros and cons of doing a study abroad versus a co-op abroad. So they're both great. You can't go wrong here, and you can do both. If you didn't see my answers previously, you can do both a study abroad and a co-op abroad. Um, they're different. A study abroad means that you're a student there. And so that's your way to make friends. It's way easier to make friends in the study world than it is in the working world. So you get the benefit of seeing what it's like to work in another country while you're co-oping, but you kind of get the benefit of a built-in community when you're studying. You don't have to choose one or the other. You could do both. Um, you also have a bit more um, freedom with where you choose to go when it comes to study abroad. You know the program you're applying to. You know that this is where you want to go. For co-op abroad, sometimes your backup might be in a different country, um, or you may find that it's easier to study where you want to go than work there because of visa requirements. So for example, a lot of people want to co-op in the UK. It's almost impossible to co-op in the UK because it's really hard to get a visa, and they're expensive. So most students end up just studying in the UK and co-oping in a place like Ireland or Australia, another English-speaking location, because they found that it was just too messy. So that's just an example. I'm not a co-op advisor. You should ask co-op about it. Um, but there are, there are benefits to both, and it's just more a matter of what you want. Is the spring break program in, in Liverpool only available for 2022 or will be available in other years too? Uh, we hope that it's available in future years. Um, that poor program was supposed to launch in spring 2020 and got canceled two days before it left. And then they've rescheduled it about four times. So we're gonna launch it in spring 2020 too. And uh, we hope that it, it runs more often than that. Are all the directional sponsored courses taught in English? Oh, young man's answering that one. Um, Let's see, which ones did I miss? If I wanna study abroad in fall 2022, when should I start working on my application? Um, applications for fall 2022 will open in early October and they will be open until mid-February. So they're not even available yet. Take some time, get accustomed to Drexel, come see us sometime in the fall or in the early winter to open up a fall 2022 application. Um, some programs I see you have work part time and cl attend class part time, particularly one in Spain. Could you explain this a bit more? We have two programs that are study plus intern. They're not study plus co op, they're study plus intern, um, which means that you're interning for credit. So we have one in EPA in, um, in Madrid and one in Brussels. Um, and you take two classes and then you intern for about 20 hours a week, and that counts as course credit, and you will get a grade on that. So that's how we work that out. We have a couple programs, a small group of programs that are study plus co-op where you have a term of study and then afterwards you have you go on co-op. There's one in Germany, you can do it in Costa Rica. Um, but generally speaking, if a student wants to do work experience abroad, they do international co-op. And we have students who will go from one to the other. Like they'll do a, um, a summer term abroad and then they'll launch into fall, winter international co-op. That definitely happens. 
For fall study abroad, does it interfere with the end of summer term? Great question. Sometimes, um, not usually very much. Some fall programs will start um, in early September, late August, um, and that does interfere with the end of summer term. It's usually only an issue if you're in summer classes and you need to leave your classes early. Um, most students are on co-op, so they leave their co-op a couple weeks early, which is like historically not a big deal. It's kind of how we fit with semester programs. Um, there's a very, very small group of programs, Australia, Singapore, Chile, that start way earlier. They start in like July. So that requires a lot more planning. But generally speaking, our fall study abroad programs um, don't interfere too much with summer term, not in a, a really a big way. If I want to do an independent study abroad program, what are some good places to look for programs? Okay, so I think Casey explained this briefly, but I, I will just reiterate. Uh, an independent study abroad program means a program that's not a Drexel partner. That's fine. You're completely allowed to do that. If we don't have a program in the place that you want to go, you want to go to a program in Cape Town, we don't have a program there. That's totally fine. No offense taken. You can absolutely do that. Um, but the place to start looking, there's a couple of resources. You can look on studyabroad.com. That's kind of like a study abroad search engine. Gooverseas.com is another great one. Um, and I'll give a shout out to a specific program that I think is great. Um, we work with them for some program, CIEE. They, they're a huge study abroad organization and they have quarter programs. They have winter quarter, spring quarter, summer quarter, fall quarter programs. We work with some of them, but not all of them. Um, so if you're trying to look for some quarter programs, I would start with CIEE. Oh, they have to, I answered a couple housing questions. Um, I wish it, I, when I mark it that I'm answering it live, I wish it would, I can mark it as, an, oh, I can, I can mark it as done. Okay, so that, that they get out of the queue so I can see the other ones. Ash is typing it, so that one. Do different GPA, different programs have different uh, GPA requirements prior to going abroad or is it a universal number to shoot for? Um, generally speaking, our programs have a GPA requirement of a 3.0. There's a small handful that have a 2.75. If you see a 2.75, it means that we know that this program, uh, our students usually do very well on it. And so we have confidence that most students who go on this program will do well. Um, and it means we have capacity. If you see a 3.25, um, that's typically the, the highest we would go as a GPA prereq. A 3.25 typically means that the program is very competitive because we don't have a lot of space or the university is just really hard. And we've just seen students not do well if they're not prepared academically. So we bumped the GPA to a 3.25. All right, I think some of the other ones are being answered by typing. I don't know if anyone can raise their hand if they're not in on the webinar. see some things in the chat. Oh, okay. There's a question, a couple questions in the chat. I'd recommend um, putting your questions in the Q&A just because that's where we're, we're monitoring. Um, I see this one went to the Q&A. Okay. Are there language requirements for study abroad? This is a, um, it depends on the program. I hate to give you a depends answer, but it depends on the program. Uh, a lot of programs don't have a language requirement at all. Some programs have a, have a 101 requirement. 101 requirement means the classes are in English, but we, we want you to know some introductory of the language just to go there. You know, it'll be helpful if you're in Spain, if you know a little bit of Spanish, et cetera. It'll be helpful if you're in South Korea to know some Korean. So we require the 101 level. So that, that means your classes are still in English. If you see that the language requirement is a 310 language, like Spanish 310 or something, that means that the classes are in, are in Spanish or in that language. So if there's a hefty language requirement, it's for a reason, it's because the classes are taught in that language and you're going on a program specifically to learn the language. Um, but generally speaking, most of our programs have no language requirement or a very low language requirement. Any other questions? If Ashley's typing in the answer to how the school's dealing with the COVID situation. Um, feel free to throw any more in the in the Q and A if you have them. And I believe this was answered, but this recording will be posted on our YouTube. Um, and I also have a list of registrants, so I am going to send that link to you once the recording is ready to be shared. Okay. 
I'll just wait to see if there's any more questions. Um, if you are interested in figuring out what program works for your major or what programs are offered when, we have the options on our website to sort by country, to sort by term, and to sort by academic focus. So you can take a look into what programs would work best for you. I'd recommend doing that. Where would a marketing student be studying? Actually, this is a great question. Marketing is one of the top majors we send abroad. Marketing majors can go anywhere. Um, you guys have a ton of flexibility and a, um, a lot of like gen eds electives or like generic business classes that can be taken in a lot of different places. So marketing majors can go anywhere. I know that, that that's, it's almost like crippled by too many decisions, but it's a good problem to have. You can go anywhere in any term. I'll be in, in classes summer term and hoping to study abroad in the fall. I know you said it may interfere with the end of finals and classes. Is it still possible to do? Totally, yes. Just be mindful of the program you're picking and the dates that it starts. Um, all pro, I mean, we're, we partner with you know 70 plus universities around the world. So they all have their own calendar. So when you're deciding on which program to pick, if you know that you have summer classes and you're concerned that it's gonna overlap a little bit, just take a look at the academic calendar and the program dates that are listed to make sure that you pick one that ends early enough. That being said, most uh, professors are going to be flexible if you're only missing like part of finals week. Um, if you're missing, you know, a month of the term, you can't do that. But if, if it's just a couple days into finals week, it's not usually a problem. Uh, as an entrepreneurship major, are the options slim for me? No, not at all. Um, you would just go in your schedule for class. I believe, unless my information is out of date, I believe most entrepreneurship majors are fall, winter class and spring, summer co-op. So you'd probably go abroad in the fall. That's when we have most of our program options, but you would have most of the same options as other business students. Um, and we have plenty of programs for business students. So you shouldn't have a hard time finding that. When can I start registering? Oh, yeah, Min's got that. Do mechanical engineers usually go to a certain country or program or are they usually scattered? Um, okay, so and mechanical engineers, engineers, anyone who has a um, plan of study that's sequential, usually those majors tend to go abroad in the fall, um, just generally speaking, because the fall we partner with um, a lot of schools that like that works out well calendar wise and a lot of schools that have huge university course catalogs, so you can pick classes for your major. So as a mechanical engineer, you'd pick a school that has mechanical engineering, and then you could take some mechanical engineering classes. Or if you plan super ahead, you know, you can plan to take some non-engineering classes abroad. Generally speaking, I'd say our engineers go to places that have engineering heavy um, classes. That would be Denmark, Hong Kong, Singapore, England, Australia, Ireland, Spain. What's off the top of my head? Um, we have a great program in Spain for winter of your sophomore year called Sapiens. That's specifically an English program in Spain for engineering students. Um, so shout out to that program. It's a great program. Ashley's the advisor for it. Um, so yeah, so if you if you have a major, anything like computer science, mechanical engineering, usually the STEM majors that have a lot of sequential classes, students usually go abroad in the fall and they usually pick somewhere that has those kind of STEM classes. If what you're hearing me say is students usually go abroad in the fall and you're like, oh no, I know I have fall winter co-op. You can often change your co-op cycle to study abroad. Um, if you can prove to the co-op office that the term for you to go abroad is the term that you're scheduled for co-op, that's the best term for you to go. It doesn't mean that you just tell them you want to go abroad and they'll change it. You have to commit. You have to apply, get in, and submit a deposit, and then they will change your co-op cycle to go on the program of choice. All right. Um, if there's a medical emergency and the student cannot go, what will happen? Um, you'll, you either won't go or you'll come home. And we'll work with you for any sort of refunds. Um, I, that's generally speaking, of course, it depends on the type of program. But um, of course, if you can't go because of a medical emergency, you'll stay home or, or we'll, we'll pull you out. I know an education major isn't a large program. Does it mean we have less options to study abroad? No, not at all. It is a smaller major. And I would say, generally speaking, most education majors go abroad earlier in their college career before they get into too much student teaching just because you have more flexibility then. So I'd say it's helpful to look earlier rather than later as an education major. It's small, but those students absolutely still go. Will it be expensive to study abroad? Oh man, it totally depends. It really does. I hate to give you that answer time and time again, 
but it's going to depend on the length of program. It's going to depend on where you go. You know, you're going to school in Philadelphia. We're one of the biggest cities in the country. It's not like it's super cheap to live here. So where you go compared to Philadelphia could be cheaper. It could be more expensive. Um, our programs in Asia tend to save students a lot of money. Our programs in the UK and in Australia tend to be more expensive. Um, the ICAs are shorter, so those won't cost as much, but it's not as much bang for your buck. You know, if you're there longer, the flight costs the same, so you get more bang for your buck. So it depends. One thing that will really rack up the bill when it comes to study abroad is what you choose to do on your free time. Casey mentioned this in the presentation, but all of our programs, everything that's listed on our website, all the Drexel programs have the same exact tuition as you're already paying. You're not paying any additional tuition. Your tuition is the same. So in terms of what's going to cost you money, it's the cost of living there. Um, and if you, and it's what you do in your free time. So when you're in Philadelphia, I know you're new to Philadelphia, but generally speaking, you're not going to like San Diego and Vegas and Miami every weekend. You're staying put in Philadelphia. When you're studying abroad, you may want to travel a bit more and those things add up. So that's my answer. It totally depends. And the more you want to go and the more you want to do, the more it, it, it's going to cost. Um, but if you choose somewhere that's less expensive than Philadelphia, then you could save money. There's also scholarships, Casey went over. There's plenty of scholarships to study abroad. For EAM's Edinburgh program, would I go to the study abroad office or do my major first? Uh, you do both. The application to study abroad is through us, but you're going to need the support of your major. You'll need the support of your major. So, <laughs> um, sorry, we're all in the same room. We're just discussing to answer what question. Um, you need the support of your advisor. So when we open an application, you're going to have to go to your advisor anyway. So at the same time. What are the options available in general for animation and VS, VFX majors? A uh, small major, great major. I would say a, a popular program for animation and VFX it are a couple of our partners in Asia, particularly Singapore. NTU in Singapore has a really great animation program. So once um, they open their doors to us from COVID, that's a really popular place. Um, and then we've sent students to South Korea and Japan before for those as well. That's not to say you couldn't go places in Europe. That's just where I've seen those students go before. I was going to do an EF tour by myself. Do you think one of the programs through Drexel are more beneficial? I'm not familiar with an EF tour. Do you either guys know what an EF tour is? Okay, do you want to answer that one? I think you know that one. Okay, Ash is going to answer your question, Gianna. I don't know what an EF tour is. I'll answer the um, study about 2023 while you're... Oh, you got that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> Applications in general will open a year before you go. So if you want to study abroad in fall 22, they're going to open in October. If you want to study abroad in winter 23, they're going to open in January, et cetera. Will going to an ICA during co-op cycle be okay? How will it affect it? As long as your co-op employer is okay with it, you could absolutely, you're absolutely allowed to do that. You are allowed to take one class per quarter that you're on co-op. That's a, a university policy. So even if you're staying domestically, you're allowed one class. If you go on an ICA in the middle of your co-op, that's going to count as your one class on co-op. And your co-op would have to be okay with you not being there for a week. Most co-ops are okay with you taking a week off to go on an ICA. I'm not sure if this is mentioned, but are we responsible for the travel costs to and from the study abroad location? Oh, great question. Uh, typically, yes. There's a couple ICAs where there's a group flight or something and that's like part of the program cost but for almost all of our programs we're going to give you the the date to arrive sometimes we'll even give you the time to arrive ish like we'll say you know please arrive before noon or something um we'll give you the date to arrive we'll give you the date to leave we'll give you the group of students that are going and you can choose to book together but there's not typically a group flight um and you're responsible for the travel costs. And the reason that we don't do group flights, by the way, is because, well, we're a co-op school. Not everyone's co-oping here. So to do a group flight, a lot of the times the students aren't in Philadelphia. They don't want to leave from Philadelphia. They have miles from a specific airline. So we don't get involved. We tell you when to book, where to book, and we'll give you the list of students to, and you guys can book together if you want to. How do you know if an ICA applies to your specific major? So ICAs are 
already coded with a specific credit. On all of the program pages, it will tell you what the course is. So if the course is marketing 301, for example, I just made up a number, um, then you'll be able to look at your plan of study and say, do I need a marketing 301 class? Do I have a free elective to spare? Where would this fit in? And if you don't know, then you can ask your advisor, um, but you should be able to tell right by the credit, the course code, whether this is something that applies to you or not. Are interior design majors such a study abroad only during junior year? If so, does that limit my options? I believe interior design majors can study abroad summer of their sophomore year or fall of their junior year. I believe that's the case. You wanna double check with your advisor. Um, in terms of like when certain majors can go abroad, we do not have any stake in that. Like you, for us, you can go abroad wherever, whenever you can make it work. You wanna speak with your advisor to verify it and it's gonna depend on what your plan of study lists. Interior design majors definitely do go abroad. I can't remember if it's summer or sophomore year, fall of junior year, but it's somewhere around there. Ask your advisor just to be sure. Let's see if there's something in the chat. What are some study abroad options for a nutrition major? Um, anything that's open to CNHP. So we have two programs that are healthcare, uh, one in Costa Rica and one in London. Those are healthcare based. Um, and then it'll depend on what kinds of classes you're looking to take. If you're looking to take specifically nutrition classes, then we look into what other schools offer nutrition classes. If you're looking to, to put aside that term, you know, you've decided that fall 24 is the term that you're gonna go abroad. So you set aside that term to take more general classes, then you could go anywhere. So it'll depend on what kind of classes you're looking to take. Very few programs are closed to specific majors. There's a small handful that it's like only these majors can go. Most programs are going to be open to all majors and it's a matter of whether you can fit it in academically. There's very few that are gonna be closed to only these majors. Did I miss anything in the chat? Nope. All right, any more questions? Oh man, this is a hard question. What is the, what do I think is the most unique or cool location that Drexel offers? Okay, I'm gonna answer my opinion, but you guys type in yours as well, okay? And I don't know if you can answer at the same time, but you type in yours as well. Just, we can't all unmute ourselves or else we don't give a feedback, but I want your minute after typing those as well. Okay, my personal opinion, I think one of the coolest programs we offer is the Dublin Amman program. That program is if you're interested in peace and conflict in the Middle East, there's no program better than this. This program starts in Ireland, in Dublin. You spend 10 days in Ireland and Northern Ireland learning about peace and conflict between Ireland and Northern Ireland. That's relatively recent, it's from the 90s. Um, and you go to Belfast for five days and you take an intensive class there. Um, then you fly from Dublin over to Amman, Jordan, and you learn about peace and conflict in the Middle East. And then you compare the two. And in Jordan, you also do things like go to Petra and sleep in the desert and swim in the Dead Sea and all those cool things. And then after that class, you stay on for another month learning intensive Arabic. So I think that that is like one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. Um, and that program runs in the summer. So if you're a, a smidge interested in Arabic or peace and conflict or the Middle East, that's the program for you. It's, it's awesome. Since currency is different in other countries, is there anything you'd have to do about that? All our program fees are gonna be in American dollars. Everything's already been converted for you. So all you'd really have to do is once you get on site, just convert your money and just budget in their currency. So for example, I advise for our programs in Australia and Aussie dollars always look scary until you convert them and they look a little less scary. So that's just something to keep in mind is when you're looking on our website, they're in American dollars. But once you get down to the nitty gritty and you're getting some bills or costs from any other country, you have to convert it and, that's, and plan. That's really it. I remember reading on the website that some locations require taking the level one language course for the respective country you want to study in. Is it recommended to go beyond that level one language course? Yeah, always. If you have it in, uh, the availability in your plan of study, it certainly won't hurt. You know, the, if you're going to Spain, the more Spanish you know, the better. If you're going to Italy, the more Italian you know, the better. 
So absolutely, you know, if you're interested at all in language, this is this is the time to learn it and this is the time to go. So yeah, if you have that flexibility and you're interested, I, I definitely recommend it. And then it'll qualify you for more things on, on site as well. You know, like the, the better you can get yourself around. Um, and if you decide you want to minor in that language, then, then you've already kind, kind of gotten off on the right foot. What did you guys say for your favorite programs? The Hanyang University Summer Program, that's a great program. I feel like I just always want to say any program in France because that's where I studied abroad in, but it's not super unique, but. It's hard to not be biased towards your own study yeah. abroad location. I mean, all of us work and study abroad because we had such a great time that we didn't want to shut up about it. So we want to talk about it professionally. So, um, so of course we, we are biased towards our own locations. Uh, is the spring break in Norway public health education justice ICA in 2022? Yeah. Yes. Um, I believe that program. Actually, can you verify that? I know there's a Norway program. I actually can't remember the subject. So before I put my foot in my mouth, I'm actually just going to check that and we'll, we'll verify for you. I have a lot of things that live in my brain when it comes to our programs, but sometimes I get confused. Spring break in Norway, Norway public health education. Yes, that is a spring 22 program. Any good sociology related programs in France is in the chat, Ashley. So I'll let Ashley answer that. She's the advisor for, for France. Yeah. Oh, great, great question. What locations are we each in charge of? So this is broken down on, on our website and on, on like all of our appointment cards and everything. So you won't accidentally, you know, email the wrong person or whatever, but I'll just give you a breakdown. Um, so I advise for our programs in Australia, Ireland, Scotland, and Israel. I'm the temporary advisor while Casey is acting in a transitional role while we have um, someone else that we're hiring. Casey will eventually be the advisor for the U uh, for not the whole UK, for England, Wales, um, and Egypt and Jordan. Casey will do those, um, probably taking them over in November. So if you like any of those locations, I'll be doing that temporarily. And then Casey will take them over in November. Um, Young Min has Asia. He has Germany. Denmark, am I forgetting any? That's it, okay. And Ashley has France, Spain, Italy, Latin America, Switzerland, am I forgetting any? Belgium. Belgium. Oh, Young Min's also the Czech Republic, yes. Yeah. Young Min is oh. also the Netherlands. Oh, yeah, Min is the Netherlands as well. Thank you, Casey. Casey's in a different room, so she can unmute herself. <laughs> yeah, so that's how we break down the world. Um, it may seem a little random in some ways. It's, it's mostly broken down uh, so that we all have about an equal amount of students. Casey also works with our inbound exchange students, which she mentioned. If you don't know what that means, um, we have exchange programs. We have partnerships with all of these partners around the world. We send our students there. And they send their students to study abroad here. So right now we've got 60 exchange students who are on Drexel's campus and perhaps you'll see them in your classes. Um, and so Casey manages that program to welcome them into Drexel. They're all studying abroad here in Philadelphia. All right, we have about five minutes. So feel free to put any more of your last minute questions in the chat. We're in the Q&A, not the chat. Entrepreneurship and interested in focusing my business around travel. Are there any minors that focus on global studies and or travel that you'd recommend it? Yeah, there's a global studies minor. I would start there for sure. Um, I would also recommend Casey mentioned at the top the Global Engagement Scholars Program. Um, so that's a I'll let you talk more about it, Casey, because you're more you're more involved in it. Um, but that's a great way to make sure that you have like you're hitting all your global spots as well. Um, Go ahead, Casey, why don't, you, why don't you give a little spiel about that real fast? Sure, yeah, so with the GES program, there are there's a breakdown of the different requirements that you have to fulfill to receive your certificate. So that would include um, studying abroad or an international experience. You don't necessarily have to study abroad to be a GES scholar, but many students end up doing both. You also have to take a certain amount of globally themed courses. I believe it's six. Um, and two of those need to be a foreign language. Um, and then you're also required to attend six globally themed events. So those can be on or off campus. 
Um, if you are a GES scholar, we add you to a Blackboard community classroom. On that page, we post announcements about different opportunities that come up to help you fulfill your requirements. So we'll share new global classrooms that are offered every term on that page. We'll post a bunch of different events coming up, either virtual or in person, that can count towards that requirement. Um, there is also a faculty member in the School of Entrepreneurship that we've done some work with. His name is Art Charles Sacco. Um, I believe he's done some work with one of our partners in Chile. Um, there's an article on our website about it that I can try to find and share in the chat. Um, but I would definitely recommend connecting with him if you're interested. Um, he really enjoys working with students and is always looking for new global opportunities um, to work in the field of entrepreneurship. So he's a really that enthusiastic faculty member that we have worked with in the past. And I'll try and find a link to that article to share with you in the chat. Well, and this anonymous person who asked this question about entrepreneurship, if you want connections, email Casey, study abroad at drexel.edu, and she'll set you up with that, with that article. Um, but yeah, global studies is a minor, and then any of the language minors, like if you want to pick a language and move forward with that, that's a great way to kind of get your foot in the door, um, and it will never hurt. If you want to work in global, it'll never hurt to know a second language. Um, if you're a current freshman, are you eligible for the summer Dublin 2022? That is for sophomores. Okay, this is a good question um, because you do have summer free as your only vacation summer. Um, that program is only available to sophomores and up because we're going to charge you a full round of tuition. It's a full caseload. It's 18 credits. So that's why our summer programs are only open to sophomores because we bill you an extra term of tuition when you're not supposed to pay tuition summer after your freshman year. So if you really wanna go in that program, you can wait till summer 23. However, you can do a non-Drexel program in your, your freshman summer. That will probably be way less expensive than doing a Drexel program because that would be an extra term of tuition that you're not planning for, um, unless you wanna figure out how to finagle that, um, graduate early or something. But generally speaking, freshmen who study abroad go on non-Drexel programs um, that are a little less credit heavy because they don't need the extra credits. Um, so if you're not sure where to start with that, we can help you narrow that down and figure out where you, where you wanna go and, and what kinds of programs there are. And when looking for summer programs outside of Drexel, the number one thing to start with is when does it start? Because a lot of summer programs start in May and our pro any program you'd go on would have to start in, in mid June or later. Okay, any last minute questions before we call it a day? Final call. All right, well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll, I'll turn it back over to Casey to close it off. If you do not know where we are, I'll remind you, we are on the second floor of the academic building, corner of 33rd and Arch, right above this new Greek place. It was once Drexel Pizza, now it's a Greek place. Um, we're right above there. So come see us. I'll turn it over to Casey. Yes, thank you guys so much for coming and for asking all of those really great, great questions. We'll be sure to send this recording out to all that registered and then it'll be posted on our YouTube probably by early next week. Um, if you do have any questions before we share the recording, please send us an email at studyabroad at drexel.edu. That is your first step if you want to start your um, application process, meet with the, one of our advisors, just send us an email there and we'll help get you set up. Um, and like Lauren said, we are located in the academic building in Suite 201. Our office is now open. There will always be someone here Monday through Friday, nine to five. This is our first time being fully back in the office since March 2020. So we're all really excited to see students in person. So we hope that you guys come through, um, come look at our brochures, different swag items, all of that good stuff.